Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to make this statement in this Honorable House. As we observe November as Business Month. Mr. Speaker, the observance of November as Business Month was implemented by your humble servant in 2015. And the Ministry of Commerce has continued this observance ever since, albeit in different forms and intensity. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Commerce continues to vigorously pursue its mandate of private sector development, recognizing that the current global economic climate and ongoing distortions in international trade have reaped havoc on our business community. Our focus, therefore, through our various programs and initiatives, place significant emphasis on supporting post-COVID-19 recovery of our businesses, and more importantly, in supporting wider efforts towards building economic resilience. In short, Mr. Speaker, as a small island developing state, we recognize that there is need not only for aggressive reaction towards these exogenous shocks that our economy experiences, but rather that we must anticipate them and proactively work with our local businesses in mitigating them. To this end, Mr. Speaker, my ministry has embarked on a range of initiatives involving a myriad of domestic, regional, and international collaborators, stakeholders, and sponsors. These programs are at various stages of implementation, with the cumulative output set to become the catalyst for sustained growth of our private sector. In this regard, Mr. Speaker, as our collective efforts, what you say, Ms. Is it? In this regard, Mr. Speaker, and as our collective efforts reach the apex of this calendar year 2022, the Ministry of Commerce. My ministry is proud to once again adopt the month of November as Business Month in celebration of the achievements, the ingenuity, and the potential of our private sector. As Business Month dawned on the business community, it brought with it great exuberance and a myriad of opportunities for entrepreneurs at all levels of the business cycle. As I said earlier, the ministry has spearheaded this well-anticipated month of activities since 2015. And if this is not sufficient evidence of the significance that our ministry and our government places on the evolution of our business ecosystem in St. Lucia. This year's theme, Action Today, Impact Tomorrow, serves as an appeal for strategic action on the part of the business community to take advantage of the programs, projects, and other initiatives available now as a means of solidifying the, the enterprise's future. As you note, Mr. Speaker, my ministry's main branch is ideally located on the fourth floor of the Heraldine Rock Building on the Castries waterfront. We are blessed with a majestic and panoramic view of the harbor. But we spend most of our time focused more importantly on overseeing the affairs of our business community. 
And that business community comprises an estimated 76% of our micro and small medium enterprises, as per our last count. A, t a statistics that we anticipate will increase through the upcoming enterprise census that is set to get underway in the coming months. This anticipated increase in MSME, Mr. Speaker, is brought about in part by the COVID-19 pandemic, which displaced a number of our hardworking citizens. While some of these persons have since reverted to full-time employment, many have continued to engage in business activities and continue to require this government support. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, through Business Month, we have been featuring a plethora of activities that will lend support to this and other groups of St. Lucia's productive sector. Our program of activities include, among others, the 15th annual St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show. And this is for its 15th year, St. Lucia and Taiwan collaborated to provide increased trading and investment opportunities to our St. Lucian businesses. The 15th annual Taiwan St. Lucia trade show was held between the 2nd and the 4th of November this year at the Harbor Club under the theme Forging Strong Ties Through Sustainable Trade. The event featured physically and virtually 45 St. Lucian companies and 23 Taiwanese businesses, leveraging existing and new opportunities across sectors that included food and beverage, ICT services, energy efficiency, health and beauty, automobile parts and accessories, creative arts, business and consumer services, among others. A key component of this year's event was the facilitation of business-to-business -business interaction between St. Lucian and Taiwanese companies and the wider St. Lucian business community, including wholesalers and distributor outlets and other commercial agents. The objective of this activity was to develop strategic trading and networking alliances among all stakeholders. Mr. Speaker, many of our big businesses and exporters got much needed visibility and opened doors through participation in the trade show. The current demand for participation far exceeds the available slot. And for this reason, plans are in progress to expand and ensure maximum participation in the ensuing year. Secondly, the Community Business Forum, which was launched in May 2022, continued throughout the month of November and will continue beyond this with the objective of directly engaging with business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs. To date, Mr. Speaker, Four of these activities have been held within the constituencies of Sufre, Rosile, Babono, and Castries East, and a fifth plan for the constituency of Souza and Saltibus, and we are dealing with the opposition and serving them well because they are members. They are members of this Honorable House, but the people in Swazel are St. Lucians. So we are serving this coming Sunday. We are planning for Swazel. And the sixth program is scheduled for Castries Southeast in December. Emanating from these events, Mr. Speaker, Approximately 300 registrants continue to engage with my ministry and other participating agencies, including the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Tourism, the Department of Economic Affairs, Export St. Lucia, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, and the St. Lucia Development Bank. 
to use the and um, to use the story in the Bible. This small seed that has been planted is quickly blossoming into a mustard tree that will continue to provide both shade and nourishment to our rural communities. Mr. Speaker, on November 17th, the ministry hosted the MSME Business Banking and Regulatory Compliance Symposium to inform owners of small businesses of the value of business banking business formalization and regulatory compliance duties. MSMEs in St. Lucia continue to struggle with a lack of access to capital. The root of the issue is that many of our MSMEs operate without having a formal business bank account due to various reasons. Mr. Speaker, on November the 24th, my ministry is going to host a government procurement symposium. The COVID, COVID and current global economic recession have exposed the vulnerability of the private sector, individuals, and economies, calling for a rethinking and redirecting of government expenditure. This cries call for strong responses based on solidarity, cooperation, and national pride in supporting what is truly St. Lucia. As the government of St. Lucia continues to institute policies to address these vulnerabilities, help rebuild the economy, and strengthen the private sector, it remains mindful of its commitment to the principles of fair and balanced trade as a signatory to international and regional trade agreements. However, it is of importance that government take the lead by supporting and directing more of its spending towards domestic goods and services. To this end, the Ministry of Commerce in collaboration with other private and public sector organizations We'll have a symposium aimed at building resilience within the local economy while sensitizing manufacturers and service providers of government procurement policies and procedures. In addition to exposing the accounting and finance officers in the public sector to the wide range of local goods and services to encourage them to buy local, and to ensure that in doing so, our economy grows and our small business sector benefits. Mr. Speaker, this symposium will be quickly followed with a crime prevention training workshop for businesses, which is stated for November the 30th. Crime is such a worrisome atrocity and it resembles a giant squid with its tentacles meddling in all facets of our society. Only this morning, we heard of the tragic passing of uh, someone. So Mr. Speaker, no longer is crime just a predominantly social issue. Crime also impacts the growth of our businesses as well as our economy. I note here that the increasing crime rate in St. Lucia has been a, a recurrent concern within the business community, as reported by private sector associations and documented in the most recent investment climate assessment survey. At this workshop, the Minister of Commerce will be working with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to detach and de debilitate these tentacles through topics such as basic crime prevention and personal safety, robbery awareness and prevention, and loss prevention training. Mr. Speaker, my ministry believes firmly in the theme, action today, impacts tomorrow. And what are some of the other actions that we are taking? 
the Ministry of Small Business Development Center launched the Young Entrepreneurs in Action program designed to empower students and business owners to receive a mutual exchange of knowledge through a student internship program. The first one took place in August this year where 40 students in the fourth and fifth form at secondary schools throughout St. Lucia were assigned to specific places of employment where they gained relevant job training in tandem with career aspirations, which proved extremely vital for their development as future entrepreneurs. This event was a resounding success and a win-win situation for both the students and the employers, who in some instances adopted the ideas of these innovative and creative interns. I take this opportunity to thank the business owners who partnered with us in that regard. Mr. Speaker, this was followed by the training of trainers which is yet another milestone at the ministry to ensure that our businesses get adequate training and capacity building. This initiative was funded by the government of Taiwan and it is aimed at improving sustainability among our small businesses. To date, 45 persons have received certificates for their recent participation in the train, training of trainers workshop and are well equipped to transfer their knowledge and build the capacity of our entrepreneurs. Mr. Speaker, as a minister with responsibility for cooperatives, I will not rest until uh, we are satisfied with the restoration and reform of our cooperative sector. Cooperatives are businesses providing specific services to their members and must operate as such. I have engaged the fishers and farmers cooperative sub subsectors and subsequent to these fact-finding forums, we have completed a workshop in response to some of the immediate needs identified by the subsector. In summary, Mr. Speaker, these workshops were an effort to build their potential for registration and for better business acumen in management of their cooperatives. Conversations have been held with the credit union subsector to collaborate on some other initiatives to facilitate our efforts at sustaining our cooperative subsector through the development of a visionary performance improvement plan. A plan which will aim to reform, restore, and rebuild our cooperative subsector. Our consultation will have no bounds as we set to collaborate on efforts to strengthen our economy one subsector at a time. Broadly, the plan looks at increasing training and better business acumen, greater knowledge of the cooperative business model, increased membership among the youth, knowledge empowerment at the junior level, because this will address the grain of our sector and succession planning. Mr. Speaker, it is imperative that the cooperative sector embraces the entrepreneurial spirit to enhance its efficiency and effectiveness to members. Through these initiatives, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry holds true to its core mission, which is to help businesses become globally competitive by facilitating dialogue and training, as well as financing the market research solutions that create real economic impact. It is on this preposition that the ministry provides continued support to the business community with the expectation of economic milestones in the future. Mr. Speaker, I have started on-site visits to businesses starting in the north of the island and expect to continue these visits well into the new year until we have covered the entire island. I thank the business community for their understanding and patience in this matter. 
I want to thank the business community for their cooperation and place on record our gratitude to the government and people of Taiwan for their support in the various activities and to thank the staff of the Ministry of Commerce and I see here with us today uh, the director of the Small Business Development Center and my permanent secretary, I want to publicly thank them and the staff of the ministry for their sterling support and service to the business community. I also want to thank the staff of the collaborating agencies and ministries, Export St. Lucia, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Agriculture, and the Ministry of Economic Affairs for the Youth Economy, who have facilitated the various business forums in the constituencies on weekends. This whole of government collaborative approach in serving the people is commendable and should accelerate the pace of recovery of our economy. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.